last-minute um, three-day lake vacation from some friends of ours, and we got home like a couple of hours ago, and it's still sunburned. I, got, I was able to break home and get a shower, and we had a good friend that interviewed us for a local magazine at that table, not literally an hour and a half ago. And then it was shower, race back, get ice for the fridge, because you know, uh, and paper towels. I brought paper towels on, because we are we are in a bar, so I can't just show up. I can't just show up. I gotta bring stuff. I got you. But my name is John Billings. My wife and I have this um, this little tiny little humble bar, and we brought this place. Uh, to you guys, because we wanted to have a place where we could all hang out, and have good wine, and good conversation, and friendships, and be, be social again. Um, but my wife says, I gotta talk about me, which is my worst subject ever. So uh, I was, uh, for a long time, I still kinda, I sorta am, I was a touring bass player for the last 25 years, and you heard about some of the people that I work with. <laughs> this is really hard, this is not easy, not easy. And um, I worked with my, when I moved to Nashville, I, had, I was one of those guys that went off to Los Angeles for eight years and served my sentence out there in the heavy metal world. I had giant long mane of hair, and some of you have seen it, I'm embarrassed, it can never be unseen once you've seen it. <laughs> and um, uh, I did that, and it was funny, being in LA, I always tell people, you know, I complain about LA. I should, because it was, it was really educational. It was, it was, it, it shaped who I am today. And it, it always had, it was always a carrot that was hanging in front of me. I was always one gig away. I was one session away. I was one record away. The next one, the next thing, the next thing. And that kind of drives people being in LA. That's why you stay so long. You know, when you're not maybe being as successful as you'd like to be or, or in a place you'd like to be. So I stayed there for eight years with that carrot dangling in front of me. I got to play with some of my personal heroes. Some of my personal heroes, I had to give rides because they didn't have cars, so that'll tell you something. <laughs> That's a true story. And uh, some of my personal heroes, I used to work, when I went in, in LA, you have to have a day job. No one, no one's a full-time actor or a full-time musician or full-time anything. Man. You have to have a job. So I was a pawnbroker, I worked in a pawn shop. I was one of those evil pawnbrokers that sat behind the counter taking, taking um, people's stuff. But what really what it is is a pawnbroker is a guy who, um, he, he's a bank. He's a bank that's accept, that uses the most money on collateral, as opposed to a bank who just does it on your word, usually. So I worked at a pawn shop for six years, and I got to meet some of my crazy heroes across the counter. Everyone coming in kind of like down on their luck a little bit. But it's an interesting perspective. And um, something really strange happened. I moved to Nashville. All my, all my, my friends from Virginia had all moved here and become really successful here, they were working constantly. They were coming to LA and doing more gigs in LA than I was ever doing. Uh, Raymond Massey would come with this blues guy and be doing gigs. Victor Wooten, or the, I knew mean, the Wooten brothers going up. They were, all the brothers were playing in Los Angeles. I wasn't playing there. My bass played Universal Amphitheater before I ever did, because Victor needed to borrow one night. And I kept going, what is wrong with this picture? Keith Horn was doing gigs in Dave Bryant's doing gigs. Everyone's doing gigs from Nashville in Los Angeles. So I finally, it took me two years of browbeating by Reggie Wooten. I finally moved to Nashville. And it was like somebody had opened a spigot. It's like s s something in my life, the universe said, now we can get busy. And 48 hours after I got here, I got a road gig with Brady Seals. And I, got, I was on that record with him and Rodney Crowell. I'm directing all this to Jim, sorry Jim. Because <laughs> you know all these things. I, I love this story. <laughs> I got here on a Friday, I moved in with Bad Brad, Brad Henderson, Bad. half of you guys know Bad Brad. Who doesn't know Bad Brad, come on. Yeah. And we got here on a Friday night, went to go see Joe Wooten that night at the Sutler. And by Sunday afternoon, Reggie Wooten took me over to this guy, Brady Seals, from some band called Little Texas, I'd never heard of him. Took me over to Brady's house and auditioned and got the gig. That was on a Sunday afternoon. And I was like, this is crazy. I just left LA the other day. And um, I went to the studio and, and did some recording for him and met Rodney Crowell. I didn't really know who Rodney Crowell was. You know, I knew his, his wife, his, his ex wife at the time. <laughs> uh, uh, Cash, uh, Roseanne Cash. That's how I knew Rodney Crowell. That's how embarrassing that story is. I knew Rodney Crowell because he was very cool, Roseanne Cash. Um, 
but Rodney was great, and that was kind of surreal. I met Michael Rhodes in that session because we got double booked. So I met an actual Nashville bass player in Song Island. They do their records differently in LA. They, they all brought their gear here. They bring a studio's worth of gear here. In LA, you just show up your, with the bass and a chord. Literally, that's all I would ever do. So that was an amazing learning experience. And immediately, I was working. I, I started working the first week. With, um, the Wooten Brothers would have me out on Wednesday nights. And, uh, there was a guy named Doobie, Doobie Lackadin. Doobie used to have me out. And I was working. I never worked in LA. I worked in some bands here and there, but I, I couldn't believe what was happening. So I was just kind of like, this isn't really happening. This is all going to collapse in any minute. And I'm going to be back in LA working at the pawn shop. And I even looked at, went around to some pawn shops in the area just in case I needed to get a day job, just to check them out. And I think it was a, about a month and a half after I moved here, I got a call from a buddy and he said, we need somebody to fill in at a, a rehearsal. I can't really tell you who the artist is, but I just need somebody to cover um, the bass chair. Would you be interested in doing it? Said, yeah, that's fine, I'll show up. It's all charted out and I read music. So I went down to the rehearsal studio and it wasn't a rehearsal, it was an audition. He just didn't want to tell anybody, he didn't want word to get out. It was an audition for Donna Summer. And uh, it remains my first and last audition I ever got. So a month and a half after I got here, I got the gig with, with Donna Summer. And I still didn't believe it was true. I didn't really believe it was really happening. I thought this is all gonna collapse in a heap. I'll be back at some pawn shop on Nonesville Road now, working in there. And um, I was, uh, a week and a half later, we were in Brazil on tour. And I had never, I'd left the country one time. And, and this was the most surreal, amazing thing that ever happened. And I still kept thinking it's gonna all collapse <laughs> And it almost did one time in Brazil uh, when the band had a disagreement with the management. And I was like, here we go, this is it, I knew it was coming. But uh, it did It did come, and, we, and I stayed with Donna until she passed uh, in 2012. And I ended up with, I played with her for 16 years. Oh, no. How do you measure that in shoes? In shoes, that's a lot. She had a lot of wigs. She had a, uh, she, Donna had, you know what, like a, I could say a piano case. Not really a piano case, but these giant rolling cases. They're four by eight feet on casters. You put them in trucks. You load a lot of gear. Donna had one for wigs. And you open the giant eight foot lid, and there's this, just a sea of wigs. And we all wore one. And, and, uh, Los Angeles, <laughs> I mean, uh, Las Vegas one time, we all wore a wig. We all picked the wig and wore a wig. And she, uh, she thought that was pretty funny. Thank God. She thought that was funny. <laughs> <laughs>